So OpenAI have just announced their new Assistance API and a feature that I was really excited about when I saw it was something called Retrieval. I think it's a super powerful feature, so let's take a look. So before we get started, let me just give you a very, very rough outline on how Retrieval works. So before we even ask our assistant any questions, the developer, that's us, provides the assistant with some helpful documents that it might need later. And these could be documents that the GPT model doesn't have awareness of. To put it into context, let's pretend that we have a top secret document that only we have access to, and we want to ask our GPT model questions about it. This is information that the GPT model could never have been trained on because the document is top secret, only we have access to it. Once the assistant has been set up with that secret document, the user can now ask the assistant a question about it. The assistant will then understand through the prompt that you have provided that you are asking about the top secret document and it will realize that it needs to access that top secret document in order to answer the question. After that, the assistant will then search through the document to try and find any relevant passages of the document that it could use to help it provide an answer. Once it's done that, the assistant then uses any available results from that search to craft its final response. And then of course, the response is then returned to the user as part of the conversation. In addition, if it did need to reference any passages within our top secret document that we provided, it will actually cite the passages it used. So that's a quick outline on how retrieval works. Next, let's have a look at how it works in practice. So what I've got here is a document that I've literally just made in the last five minutes, which is a bunch of information about a non-existent fictional band called Sam's Very Real Band, which is a little bit confusing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this PDF to the assistant. Then I'm going to ask the assistant a bunch of questions about the band that I've made up here. So what you can see in front of you right now is an app that I've built using Streamlit. Whenever I ask it a question, that prompt is then passed to our OpenAI assistant, which has been prepared with the document that we've just talked about, and it's gonna do its best to answer the question using that document that it was given. So I am going to ask, what is the name of the first album? The first album by Sam's very real band is called Hallucinations. Thank you for sharing the information for the document. What, uh, when is the third album coming out? The third album by Sam's Very Real Band is set to be released in 2048, although the title has not been decided yet. How many people are in the band? Again, this is all fictional information, but it's got every single question right so far. The band has, Sam's Very Real Band has 18 members, most of whom play brass instruments. So as you can see, the Assistance API works pretty well. That has just answered a bunch of questions 100% correctly from a bunch of fictional data that I've given it. Um, now we can have a look and see how it was built. So I'm going to go through step by step and talk through each of these code blocks and how it was put together. So the first block here is nothing special. It is just initializing the OpenAI client. So in the next step, we need to declare the assistant's ID. So there are two different ways to create a OpenAI assistant. One of the ways is you can use the Python library to create it using code. And the other way that you can do it is actually using OpenAI's web platform. So if you wanted to create your assistant using the web platform, you can actually just click on the assistance button over here on the left-hand side of the OpenAI platform. You can see that I've got two assistants that I've made already here, but if you wanted to create a new one, just hit this create button. So we have specified a name, so I've just called it band assistant, and I've given it some instructions. You're a helpful assistant. You use the data in the attached file exclusively to answer any questions about the band. Be brief in your answers and do not mention the file in your answers. Next, I've uh, provided the model that we want to use. Now, I typically, honestly, I just because I find the GPT 3.5 model to be perfectly fine for most of my use cases. I tend to use 3.5, obviously you can use four if you want to. If you did want to use 3.5, however, it is important that you cannot actually use the base turbo model. It needs to be either the 16K, or sorry, not even the 16K, it has to be the 1106 model. And the reason for that is, as you can see, if I switch over to here, the retrieval area is actually grayed out. Same with turbo. The only one that it works on is the for 3.5 at least is the 1106 model. So if I click that and then click on retrieval, make sure that's enabled. And then I've actually uploaded the file here, which is that information about my very real band. And that's all that was required to get it set up. But now let's have a look and see what is required to ask it questions. So I've headed back over to our Jupyter Notebook and what I've done is declared the assistant ID to be the assistant ID for the band assistant that we've just created. 
Next up, what I'm going to do is just actually fetch the assistant. So I use the assistance.retrieve method here, passing in the assistant ID to actually get the assistant and make sure that it is valid. And so when I hit play on here, you can see that we, it returns an assistant model with the instructions, with the model name that we've used here, the name of the assistant, and it even specifies right here that we actually want to use retrieval. Next, I'm going to create a new thread just because this is a new conversation that I'm having with our assistant. So I'm just going to hit on the play button here and I can see that my thread has been created and returned. Next we're going to create a run on that thread that we've just created. So I've gone client beta threads run and we're creating it and passing in the parameters the thread ID which we've just uh, created just above, the assistant ID which is the assistant's ID which we uh, fetched just a minute ago in that block above the uh, last one and then we also just pass in the instructions. So these instructions are going to be the question that we ultimately want to ask our assistant and then I I just return the run object at the end. So let's hit play and just see what we get. Uh, we have the run with the ID and everything has come through exactly as expected. The run object has a property on it called completed at and right after it's been created, it's set to none. And the reason for that is it's gonna take a little bit of time for our assistant to open up our file, go through it, find the context that it needs and then answer the question. And so what we'll do in the next block is we will actually fetch that run once again. When we retrieve our run again, what we're looking for is for that completed at property to have a value, which means that our assistant has finished processing our request and has completed it. So if I hit play on this retrieval here, we can now see that completed at has a timestamp associated with it, which means we're now ready to have a look at the result. And so the last step is to actually just grab the latest message in the thread. So as you can see, we're just grabbing the messages here. We're going threads message list and uh, we are just passing in the thread ID. And then here I'm just going to log the content of that. So if I hit play, we can see that a message content text object was returned and there's some actually pretty interesting uh, bits and pieces in here that we should check out. So first and foremost, the response is, the name of the second album by Sounds Very Real Band is time to make another video. So while that's cool that the answer is correct, what's even cooler to me anyway, is that you can actually see the exact citation. So it's referring to the file. So there's a reference ID here, referencing to the file that I've uploaded. And you can actually see the passage that it's using to pull this information and create the answer or create its response. So the quote that was used was the band has two albums out, one is called Hallucinations and the other is called Time to Make Another Video. So this is the context that was ultimately passed to the language model to then form our response, which is why it is correct. And that's it for this tutorial. It is an incredibly simple API to work with and I'm really impressed with the quality of the results that I've been getting from the assistance just, just from a couple of tests that I put out over the weekend. And so to anybody who is still watching this, um, thank you for watching until the end. Um, and I have two questions for you. Uh, one of them is, uh, what are you gonna build with the assistance API? I would love to know, because for me, it's difficult to wrap my head around what exactly could be done with this uh, API. And then the second question is, what else would you like to see me cover? I'm really enjoying making these AI videos, but right now it's kind of difficult to gauge exactly what you would like to see. So if you have any suggestions, please do leave them down in the comments. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.